Hi everyone, this is Rachel Cotrer and Brandon Cotrer of BR Cotrer Incorporated, and we are here today to share with you about a 20 to 30 minute webinar about a game plan for using Brahmin cattle. So hopefully if you are watching this, perhaps you are thinking about getting in the Brahmin cattle business, or maybe you already are in the Brahmin cattle business, but you'd like to learn um, a few more tips from people who've been in the business um, for longer than you. And so Brandon and I are here today to share a quick um, presentation on how you can use Brahmin cattle in your herd. You might want to think about the different reasons why you want to use Brahmins. Uh, Brahmins are very useful in terms of heat tolerance. They have a lot of extra skin uh, to help dissipate heat and more sweat glands and more uh, than other breeds of cattle and uh, they thrive in harsh conditions. The, the conditions that they were developed in uh, were hot, humid, extremely harsh conditions and that's where Brahmins are really good at. They have superior maternal ability great mothers that milk good uh, and, and do a lot more on less. They're insect resistant. They, uh, they produce a sebum that help, uh, an oily substance in their skin that helps uh, detour insects, as well as they have a shaking ability on their skin to help get flies and different pests like that off. They're extremely uh, healthy and resilient and have really good survival instincts. It's hard to make them sick. Uh, the key, they are, the Brahmin's cattle are the key to the maximum heterosis. Heterosis, you get from crossing two different animals uh, or two different breeds of cattle to get heterosis. Brahmin's are more different than any other thing, so you get the maximum heterosis. What you'd like to do, you want to try to match the cattle to fit your environment. Brahmin cattle, if you look at this map here, Brahmin cattle are extremely well suited for especially the orange down at the bottom, but also the lighter orange a little further north. So all along the southern U.S., they're uh, very well adapted to these conditions of the heat, the humidity. Uh, they do well in the, the different forage areas of the south, south southern United States. And then you want to go even further north, you can breed half-bloods and quarter-bloods and things like that to get more uh, crossbred and hybrid vigor into your cow herd. The cool thing is, if you look across the global map, how much of an impact Brahmin cattle could have. Uh, you look in those same areas we saw earlier of the United States, that's very minimal compared to the whole global map where you look at the red and the orange there. Red and orange all across the center of the map there, that's a huge surface area here on Earth that are, ca are, are big cattle producing areas. And so if you can make good Brahmin cattle t that would be influential in the herds across those areas, uh, the, the Brahmin cattle that you're breeding can make a giant impact. You want to buy and breed cattle that matter. Somebody, if you're going to invest in Brahmin cattle, you should invest in cattle that benefit your herd. You, they, they need to, to add to the quality of your herd. They need to benefit your customer's herd. you got to give somebody a reason to buy cattle to help improve their cattle. And you want to be able to add profit to their livelihood. That's what we're all in it for. It's a business, so you have to make a profit at the end of the day. And you want to breed cattle that benefit the entire beef industry. Because keeping in mind, although we all like Brahmin cattle and we like to breed cattle and mess with cattle, the main goal at the end is to produce better beef to serve the world. So that was so exciting, Brandon. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And if you're still with us in this video, obviously you can probably see that we're very passionate about Brahmin cattle. And we want to do a quick introduction. Um, this is Brandon and I and our two daughters, Molly and Annie. And we are the owners of BR Cotrer Incorporated, which is a Brahmin cattle operation located on the Gulf Coast of Texas. And you can visit our website at brcotrer.com. So obviously you know that Brahmin cattle matter a lot to us and we want to share a little bit about why. Um, I grew up on a very large Brahmin cattle operation as a youngster and Brandon had the opportunity to work for several prominent Brahmin operations also as a high schooler and college student. And we actually met at the Brahmin Junior Nationals 
and uh, got married shortly after that. And Brahmin cattle has always been one of the common threads of Brandon and, and our life. Um, we've been married for 10 years, and during these 10 years, we have produced 16 national and international champion or reserve Brahmin cattle um, in the first 10 years of our marriage. You'll see one of our favorites here on the screen, which is 21 over 8. Boom Shakalaka, who is the two-time uh, grand champion at Houston. And so showing cattle um, is an important way that we showcase the Brahmin breed um, to the world. But our focus is a lot more than just the show ring. Um, we believe in performance and we believe in innovation. And one of our themes is actually um, at BR Couture is actually where tradition meets modern because we're con we're proud of our past and our heritage, but we're constantly thinking of new ways we can improve the Brahmin breed and the beef industry. Um, one of the ways is that we were the first herd to incorporate genomic EPDs in the Brahmin breed in the United States through a partnership with Zoetis. And so that's a, a progressive thing that we believe in. We also developed the first two economic indexes for the Brahmin breed a few years back. This was another tool that we saw in other breeds and we wish we had it in Brahmin and at that time we just didn't so we decided to fund the research ourselves and create these indexes which you'll see um, in on all the cattle from the BRC program. We also launched the first 100% Brahmin beef program in the USA which is our Brahmin country beef program and along those lines we had heard rumors you know, through the years of that Brahmin cattle don't grade, Brahmin cattle have quality issues, and we knew that wasn't true. From our research in feeding Brahmin cattle and measuring our cattle with carcass ultrasound, and so we decided to put our money where our mouth is and launch this program, and we've currently been doing it since 2018 and have had tons of satisfaction from people across the world who have experienced eating Brahmin beef and they love it. And that's something that we're really proud of. And then finally, Brandon and I also um, <coughs> were the first husband and wife to serve on the American Brahmin Breeders Association Board of Directors and Executive Committee at the same time. And so um, these are some of the pillars of our brand, um, service, leadership, giving back, progressive methods, and I think you'll find um, these pillars kind of shine through in, in our program and in this talk that we're giving with you. So Brahmins are, Brahmin cattle are our passion, clearly, and we want to share that with you. Um, we realize that not everyone is as, as fortunate to us as us who have grown up with the Brahmin breed and the experiences. And if you're new in the breed it or new in the cattle business, it can be a little overwhelming. And so um, education is a big core value of our brand, and we're glad to share our experience to help others grow the breed. If you think about different ways you can use Brahmins, there are two tip, two roles that you can typically use them in. As a registered seed, uh, registered business and the seed stock business with the ultimate goal of later on down the road producing bulls and females that will be a crossbreeding tool and be available to commercial producers to use in their crossbreeding programs like we talked about earlier to get the maximum heterosis available. In the U.S. purebred market, what do those guys want? They want a functional phenotype, cattle that can get out and travel and do well, where they stand on a good skeleton. They want a registration paper. They want customer service and guarantees. They want to be able to have it, be able to back up the product as far as breeding guarantees, and they want to be able to know that you're going to provide the service that they need for them to be successful. They're going to want performance data, at least an actual birth weight and a weaning weight, but you go on from there, you can get yearling weights, uh, frame scores, carcass ultrasounds, different things like that. They want a good pedigree with a well-known sire and dam and a, note, uh, <clears throat> and a noteworthy animal on a three-generation pedigree. And it's getting more and more important as time goes on uh, to have good dispositions. A game plan for your registered business could be always invest in quality first and foremost. You'll, you will uh, reap the benefits of that uh, quicker and easier in your profit 
as you go into your business. You want to find cattle that have good phenotype. They're built good. They've got good muscle, good eye appeal. They've got a good pedigree and genetics to back them up. They need to be user-friendly cattle. And when we say user-friendly cattle, they need to have gentle dispositions. They need to have good udder and teat quality, and they need to have good feet and legs that they're not going to go on and make their new owner uh, give them problems in the long run. Uh, You want to be able to... AI utilize AI so you can breed better and better genetics if possible and you also want to consider flushing to maximize the best genetics in a faster time interval realize that this process is going to take some time and it's not an overnight adventure adventure when you get ready the easy thing to do is always sell mark uh, is always to sell your brahmin heifers You'll always have a market for Brahmin heifers to both fellow seed stock producers and commercial producers looking to produce F1s. There's a huge, huge value in the Brahmin female. You can use them to retain as replacements yourself. You can sell them in in your own private treaty sales. You can sell in these new Facebook groups that are popping up everywhere. There's special sales every day of the week. We just came from a real prominent one here in Texas yesterday, and those Brahmin and Brahmin Cross females were just ringing the bell and having a really good time, and the crowd was excited to get them. You can host your online sale once you've built up your numbers enough and start making a name for yourself. Sometimes it can be a little harder to market Brahmin bulls, but you have to market quality Brahmin bulls. And you have to pay a little more attention to your profit margin and realize that it takes about 18 months to develop a bull from birth to breeding age. You can sell these bulls through private treaty sales, online Facebook groups, in special sales like we were just talking about, or you can also host your own, own online sale. Or there are regional and local cattlemen bull tests and sales that go on around the country that you can enter your bulls in and market that way. Now, always be mindful that you will, notice the will is in bold, because you will have a bottom end, and those can be castrated, sold at the local auction, or fed out of steers um, in, in the local feedlots, and then you can go on, to, in, on into the uh, food system. So let's talk a little bit about your marketing. Um, in addition to working at BRC, I also own and operate Ranch House Designs, which is a large agriculture marketing firm here in the United States. And when people tend to get into a new breed, one of the first questions they have is how are they going to market their program? I like to share this basic marketing principle, which is the law of duality, which states that in the long run, every market becomes a two horse race. And if you think about it, if I were to say, hey, Brandon, this weekend we need to redo our bathroom. The first two places he's probably going to think of us going are... Lowe's and Home Depot. (laughs) Lowe's and Home Depot. It comes down to two. Or if I'm like, hey, I'm I'm hungry. I need a burger on the run. I'm going to think I'm going to drive through... McDonald's or Burger King. (laughs) Right. So um, ultimately, every market, no matter what it was, it, it is, ultimately comes down to two businesses. But that can be scary if you're if you're a new person getting into the business because you might be thinking, how in the world am I going to position myself as one of the top two businesses in the Brahmin breed if I'm just getting started? And that's where I share the um, the advice of finding your niche in the Brahmin um, business. There's really two approaches you can take, the shotgun approach or the rifle approach. And the shotgun approach is basically just thinking, hey, I'm going to raise Brahmin cattle and I'm going to put them out there and I'm going to see who I can get to find them. Where the rifle approach is a very specific, narrow target in your marketing. And in this situation, the rifle approach is so much better because when you can pinpoint your market and get a very specific market, you actually have fewer competitors and you can focus on your strengths and growth. And I like to advise people if they want to define their market to to describe their market in four words or less. So an example might be, you might be um, focusing on raising pulled cattle in Oklahoma. Well, there's four words and there's your market. Or show cattle in the Houston area. There's a market for you right there. Um, So 
that is often helpful to start in your niche and then really focus on that. And then once you're solid in that in that category, then expand to another or grow your market in a larger a larger regional area. Um, so there's a, a few niche marketing options that you can use. And this is helpful in the beginning because you want to use this when you're deciding what type and kind of cattle that you want to breed. Um, and and this decision should take into consideration your location, your size, etc. You know, for example, if you live near a major metropolitan area, you might focus on selling junior show calves to urban kids. Um, so some niche options you might consider is a high type focus. This would be more along your show cattle lines, you know, where you're just looking for um, eye appealing cattle that look good with a good strong phenotype, um, you could focus on raising gentle cattle. So a niche market there might be gentle cattle in South Alabama. Um, a polled focus is, is a popular niche for the breed where you only focus on raising polled genetics. The junior show market is another option for you. The international market is one that many think is maybe difficult to get into, but it is definitely a possibility if you have high-end genetics and you're willing to travel and promote your program. Another would be a carcass focus. I'm um, raising Brahmin cattle with high marbling, raising Brahmin cattle with high tenderness. Um, you can also focus on the F1 market, raising good commercial replacements, and you can focus on a local market, um, serving Brahmin breeders within a 50 to 100 mile radius of where you live. Like we were talking about before, what does the purebred guy want? Well, what does the crossbreeding customer want? A crossbreeding customer uh, wants his bulls to cover the cows and the cows to breed back and calve regularly. Fertility is, is crucial in a, to a crossbreeding person. He wants cattle that are sound enough to travel and work and walk and get out and, and uh, perform for a long period of time. So you've got longevity and functionality. Then he wants his cows to calve with none to minimal assistance. He wants them to raise quality, bloomy calves that he can market. So he's going to have to pay attention to birth weight and milking and maternal ability. And he wants cattle that can work efficiently with minimal inputs because that's going to affect his bottom line and his profit. A game plan for getting into the commercial or F1 business is just, you can do it several ways. You can use registered Brahmin bulls on non-registered or Brahmin influenced cows, or you can use registered Brahmin bulls on British or continental based cows. Some marketing options to consider if you're an F1 producer when you want to market your heifers. You can always keep in mind, she's the queen of cow country. She's going to really get out and work, work, especially in the southern U.S. This is the type of cow that works well throughout the Gulf Coast region because she does more with less inputs for a longer period of time. That was said by one of my heroes, Bubba Sartwell. It's a genius in cattle marketing here in Texas. And the Brahmin F1 female will always bring a premium throughout the south. You can go to any sale any day of the week throughout the south and that'll be proven. Marketing options to consider for your F1 bulls. You can sell at the local auction barn, will offer you, which will offer you a cash flow and help you pay your bills that come every day of the week. Or uh, you, they can feed efficiently in southern feedlots during the summer, summer months. That's where these guys will really shine. There's always a small, there is a small market, uh, depending on the quality, for use as herd sires in southern herds to produce a touch of, uh, of ear in these commercial herds, but not necessarily a half-blood. Somebody that wants to add a little more Brahmin, but not quite uh, dive in the full way, they can use a half-blood bull to produce quarter-blood calves. So when we got in the business and, and really started focusing on things, at first it was a little easy to maybe get a little discouraged because you have all these big ideas and all these plans. But as we know, in the cattle business, that can take a while because it takes a while to, to buy your heifers, to develop them out, to get them bred, to calve them out, get those heifers weaned. You know, that's not a overnight um, option. Uh, one of my favorite books is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And in this book, he talks about just different, you know, legends of different fields of sports and business and, and things like that. And his observation is that it takes 10,000 hours to become a success in your field. 
And if you measure that, I think that's about five years on a normal um, work week. And so when you get in the business, keep in mind that it is a lifetime commitment. Um, It's a commitment that takes a decade or more um, to really start seeing your plans come into action in the cattle business and start seeing those rewards. you know, there's not a shortage of Brahmin cattle out there. I mean, you can look on Facebook and you can buy Brahmin cattle every single day of the week, everywhere in the South at every price range. And uh, you've probably noticed that yourself if you're watching this video. But what there is a sor- shortage of is really good Brahmin cattle. And we found that good cattle are hard to come by. And people will come from far and wide to buy the good ones. So when you're thinking about getting started in the business, keep in mind that there's more profit potential in the top 10% of the Brahmin cattle in the USA than all other 90% combined. Um, I know sometimes it's tempting to to get in and think you want to focus on volume and um, lower quality cattle because you can get more numbers. But ultimately, in the long run, you want to breed those cattle that we talked about, the cattle that you believe in and cattle that can benefit your herd and benefit the beef industry. When someone buys from you, they are making a decision that is going to impact their family and their financial success for at least five years. This is something that we take really seriously when we're selling cattle to people because, you know, when someone comes and buys a bull from us, um, that bull is going to impact not just his herd, but his family. Because if that, well, first of all, if the bull can't get his cows bred, he's really in a bind. Um, and if, and if that bull doesn't give him good calves, then it's hurting their bottom line. And so, Integrity is something that we take really seriously in selling our cattle, and it's something that when people come to buy from us, we take the time to talk with them about their goals, talk with them about their facilities, their setup, you know, what their plans are in the business, because we know that their investment with BRC is one that's going to make a difference in their herd and in their family's life for quite some time. Um, we like to end our this webinar with a quote from Tom Burke, who's a legendary Angus breeder, and it says that a good seed stock breeder wants someone else to flourish with their genetics. And that really sums up our philosophy here at BRC, and hopefully what you experience in the whole Brahmin breed is that if you're interested in Brahmin cattle, we want to help you every step of the way. And our ultimate goal is for you to have the best experience with us and with the Brahmin breed um, so that you'll be happy, your family will be happy, and you'll share that passion for Brahmin with others. We want to thank you for joining us. And we believe in Brahmin cattle, and we want to help you be as successful as possible. Join us and and learn more about us at www.brcotrere.com. If you also enjoyed this webinar, you might check us out on our website. Um, We have a special page called Learn where we share lots of fun tips. And we also offer a Brahmin Online Academy that gives a much more in-depth training about Brahmin cattle. And we also have the BRC Um, Brahmin Education Group on Facebook, which is great for learning. And if we can help you in any way, don't ever hesitate to contact us. Thank you and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.